What's up guys, it's Gaz, welcome to the Warframe video. So today we'll be going over basically some sniper playstyles for five different frames, and we'll also be going over the Meticulous Aim mod that was recently unlocked with the Nightwave uh, rank ups. So Meticulous Aim is a mod specifically for the Volcar and the Volcar Wraith. This will give you increased headshot damage, but minus body shot damage. So I personally don't think that minus body shot damage is a big issue for the most part, because if you're using a sniper rifle, you should be going for headshots in the first place anyway. And I know like you're not going to always hit your headshots, but I usually don't even go for shots with a sniper if it's not a headshot, in, in my personal opinion. Um, so we're going to actually be comparing that Meticulous Aim mod to the other um, AUG mod for the Volcar, which is Lasting Purity, I believe. So that one, it will give you, instead of a straight headshot damage, it will give you something called Dead Aim, which apparently is going to increase the... Uh, damage bonus of the scoped uh, headshot multiplier you get from using the Volcar in the first place. So, here's the build we're currently using. Um, that's actually going to be something we'll talk about later. So this is the build that we'll currently be using, guys. We're using Viral, and we're using the Meticulous Aim Augment mod. We're also using Vigilant Armaments. And if you didn't want to use Meticulous Aim because you don't like body shot, uh, you don't like the body shot to being really low damage, you can actually switch out Meticulous Aim for Lasting Purity, and they basically do the exact same amount of damage. Let's actually quickly show that uh, the damage difference here. So I'm going to show this build. Uh, the build doesn't really matter on Limbo that much, but we're basically going to show this build with Meticulous Aim, and then we're going to show the exact same build with Lasting Purity, guys, and we'll show the damage difference. The damage difference is basically zero, just spoiler alert. So um, it will be going over basically sniping in general with some of these frames. So that was about... 5,600, or 56,000 on that first headshot crit on the Scorpion, so we're going to switch to the Lasting Purity mod here, exact same build, besides that same exact ribbon, I have a plus damage Grenier ribbon, I have a minus zoom ribbon, all that stuff on there, um, and you're going to see, I think it's like a difference of like a couple hundred damage points, so it's really not going to make a huge difference, um, I kind of hope that they buff Meticulous Aim actually, because uh, it has a negative but it doesn't give you enough bonus damage compared to the other one to really be worth it. So 50, 56,000 as well there. I want to say that was pretty much ex right in the money with the other one. So, yeah, guys, no matter which one of these augment mods you run on the Volcar, it's going to be the exact same damage pretty much. Um, Meticulous Aim does give you, like, a couple more points extra, but uh, it's not going to really be a life or death difference right there. Um, I actually was using this thing as a specialized tool against Nox because... Nox is one of those enemies where headshots are very important. So, um, that's what we've been messing with. I got a special ribbon to take out the Nox. Unfortunately, I didn't get, like, a god roll. But, um, yeah, this enemy, the Nox right here, is very annoying. So, you want to have something really powerful to do some headshot damage to it. And I think that the Volcar can kind of fit that bill. You gotta remove his armor for sure. And this thing has terrible crit chance at base. So, you're gonna need to do some work to make it actually, um do what you want it to do. So, for example, I'm using the Adarza Kavat right now. Uh, the the Volcar Wraith has 50% crit chance modded if you put on Point Strike, and I'm not going to waste a slot on Argon Scope. So what I'm going to do instead, guys, is I'm going to take this 50% crit chance, and I'm going to make it 110 when I use the Adarza Kavat uh, Cat's Eye ability. So every 10 seconds, all allies um, within 25 meters get... 60% additive crit chance. And we have this mod called Tech Enhance for the Kavat, which makes it last 30% longer. So that 10, 10 seconds becomes 13 seconds. So that's 7 seconds of downtime on our 60% crit chance buff, guys. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, it makes this makes this thing have 110% crit chance. And since we're using the Vigilant set bonus, we can potentially get some red crit numbers in there. If we get the 10% chance to get the orange crit when the Adarza buff is off... And we also get the 10% chance to turn that into a red crit. It is possible. It's a very low chance, but it is possible. It's like a 1% chance, if that. Okay, so that's basically it, guys. We're going to be going over some additional play styles here. So I'm going to be showing you a sniper setup for Limbo really quickly, because I actually have always thought Limbo is a pretty good sniper. So what you want to do here is you want to use his Rift Torrent Augment mod. You don't have to use it, but I would recommend it. This will give you 30% extra weapon damage at base per enemy affected by your 3. So the nice thing about your 3 on Limbo is it can actually pull enemies outside of your bubble into the rift. And that will let you snipe enemies outside of your bubble with a sniper rifle. And it's pretty convenient. So 
We're actually going to use the Riven for this one. It's like an anti-Nox Riven, so we've got Damage to Grenier, overall damage, uh, plus Cold. Plus Cold is not that great, unfortunately. Um, and then we have Minus Zoom. I actually value Minus Zoom very highly on this, because the amount of extra zooming you need to do to get the full headshot multiplier is 8x without a Minus Zoom Riven. With my minus zoom ribbon, it becomes 2.6 to get the 80% headshot multiplier, or 70% headshot multiplier, which is really convenient for up close and personal. If we had 8x uh, zoom on that Nox right there, it would have been like a really annoying thing to just shoot him constantly. Another annoying thing about this um, Volcar, guys, is that it actually has like guaranteed impact procs when you shoot guys, it feels like, or it has a very high chance to stagger enemies. So um, if you have an, a Warframe that can freeze enemies in the rift or freeze them solid with like Gara or something or um I'd say Limbo is probably one of the best choices also Haro is really good Haro I can't really make work in the simulacrum very well but I've tried it in mission with Haro and in mission with Haro it works a lot better although you'd probably just be better off spamming your melee um so I was theory crafting a lasting covenant build with the Volcar Wraith and it really is not that great I'd say definitely just use like an Archaplasmor or a Moon or something and kill like 10 enemies at once with one shot. And don't worry about refreshing on every headshot kill with the Volcar. But yeah, like I said, since this thing has such a low crit chance, uh, Haro's actually going to help it out a good amount. Let's put on Meticulous Aim for just this test really quickly. Alright, so let's just give this paused... I guess we can actually just unpause the Nox. I'm really focusing hard on Nox Eximus right now for this, this weapon, guys. Um, because my Rubico Prime does not kill Nox Eximus fast enough, so I'm, I'm hoping if I stack all this headshot damage on top of itself, it's going to murder this Nox Eximus very easily. So that's with the orange and red crits. It's not killing him very quickly, still. Still took over an entire magazine to kill him, so... Yeah, um, I think that was with the Riven, too, so... It's not really a top tier weapon at all, guys. Let's do the same thing there with my, uh... With my Rubico Prime. Okay, that did. That was no ribbon. That's actually not terrible, though. Let's do Rubico Prime. So, comparing the stats of these two, um, Rubico Prime has basically double the crit chance, 3x critical damage multiplier, faster fire rate, lower magazine, much faster reload, lower status, um, and it's got lower damage overall. But that double crit chance and higher crit damage multiplier is going to make it much better. Like, I would never, say, bring the Volcar Wraith to an Eidolon fight. But, um, I have done it in the past. It was my old go-to Eidolon weapon. And, um, this is not an exact test right here. So we'll take off Stormbringer. And then we'll put on just some more Viral. So, like I said in the last video, guys, you can just search Viral and it'll show you all the mods that give you Viral now. It's very convenient. Throw that there, and then we'll throw that there. Actually, let's put the multi-shot in here. Yeah, if we can even fit multi-shot on. Alright, that should work. Let's just compare these two on this Nox. I definitely recommend putting multi-shot on every sniper. If you can uh, get the mods for it. Alright, so we're fully zoomed in. It seems to be better than the the Rubico Prime for killing the Nox Eximus specifically. Because the uh, the scope bonus of the Rubico Prime is not headshot damage. Unlike the Volcar Wraith. The Volcar is straight headshot damage focused. The Rubico Prime works on body shots. That's why it's really nice against Eidolons. Um, but yeah, guys. I'd say that don't bring the Volcar. Like I said. Um, you can get red crits technically with you bringing a Darza Kavat. But it's not really that great. Let's quickly show it with Saren. So since we're removing armor with Saren, and we're also using the Venom Dose Augment mod, it can be really nice to get some really high damage uh, headshot numbers with, with Saren. So we're modding our weapon for Viral, uh, since we have the additional corrosive damage from Venom Dose on Saren. We actually don't have invincibility on. I think I die here, like, instantly, pretty much. Oh no, we actually fight them a little bit. So you gotta get those spores spreading with Saren to start removing the armor from the enemies. And then that will make it so you're getting... Really high damage numbers, even on the Nox. I think we one-shot the Nox, although he does kill us the first time. That's because his armor has been removed, his damage reduction is basically gone. But his armor, or his health bar is still yellow, because he has a little bit of armor left. Alright, so, yeah, that's the power of the, if you fully zoom in, we got all the extra bonus headshot damage. And then it's a one-shot on the Nox, guys. So Saren can be a pretty good sniper as well. He's also got uh, a really quick Gara 
set up for um, using the sniper. This is a little bit overkill, so we are using the Spectro Siphon Augment mod. So if an enemy dies within our uh, our third ability, the Carousel of Mirrors, I don't remember what it's called exactly, um, it will give us a 50% chance that the enemy will drop an energy orb. And if we're also using Sharpshooter, that's 15 energy per headshot kill. And I have tried this in mission with Gara, and it actually is pretty nice. Uh, you don't even need to use the Spectro Siphon part of it, just saying the headshot kills with Sharpshooter will sustain your energy for the most part. So yeah, we got a 15 energy from that guy. He dropped an energy orb as well. That was basically 35 energy from that singular... Oh, that's 40 energy from that singular kill there, guys. And if we have energized proc, it would be like 200 energy, pretty much. So, yeah, that can be really nice if you want a alternative playstyle for Gara. Notice how the Nox Eximus just is not caring at all right now. But like, since these enemies are frozen in our 4, they're very easy to headshot with the, uh, the sniper. Although, he is getting blinded, so he put his... His hands in front of his face, so it's like basically really hard to headshot him now. So, uh, use some caution with when using a sniper loadout for Gara. It might end up being annoying like this when the enemies have their hands in front of their face. But now that we've gone over that stuff, guys, I want to go over the main uh, sniper focus of this video and something I've been actually really enjoying the last day since I've been testing it out. So we're gonna be going over a sniper loadout for Nyx. So the idea on this one, guys, is we're actually gonna be using. Assimilate Augment mod, which makes you walk, you can walk around in your four and be invincible, but still drain, uh, drain energy. We're also using enough power strength to get full armor removal from our two, which is 125% power strength. So a rank four intensify doesn't need to be maxed out. It will still work great. Got a little bit of range on here for just hitting a big area with our three. We've also got Vigilant, Vigilante Pursuit to give us some enemy radar, and we also have Arcane Momentum to give us reload speed on sniper rifles. So the idea of this, guys, is we're going to be using Assimilate. We're also using the Sharpshooter mod on the Sniper Rifle, and we're also using Meticulous Aim, so very headshot-focused build here. You can definitely just do a viral build by taking that off and putting uh, prime, Primed or Normal Cryo Rounds in that slot. But basically, guys, we're going to be focusing on headshots, making sure we get a headshot on every kill, and then they give us 15 energy per kill. So that will restore energy to us while we are in our 4 walking around Invincible. So I actually have some gameplay for you on the, the screen for that. It's going to be a Kuva Siphon. With Nyx, we're also going to be using Ninkandi Prime. If you guys didn't know this, Ninkandi Prime has really good mobility with the hold combo. And that mobility does work in your Assimilate with Nyx. So it's really nice. So I'm always going to be using the Ninkandi Prime on Nyx in the future. We also have the Cinema Gamma Core. This is just to remove armor, although I, after I thought about it a little bit, I didn't even need to remove armor because I'm using Nyx. I can fully remove armor just by pushing my 2 and an enemy. And we're also using the Adarza Kavat just because... Uh, that 50% that crit chance on the Volcar is terrible, guys. Definitely would recommend an Adarsic of that. I've also tried out Double Guardian. Or not Double Guardian, Double Avenger. Uh, yeah. You have to take a lot of damage to do that, so it's not going to be viable on most frames. But on Anaros, that was very fun. Double uh, Avenger on Anaros. So here's me just brain farting and going back to Cephalon Samaras again. But yeah, we have a survival mission against the Grenier, so this should be pretty good. We have a plus damage to Grenier Riven. Um, you can actually get some really... Disgusting Riven to the Volcar. It has five dispo, and um, you can actually get this really crazy uh, Riven setup where you get minus 100% impact. So this thing is only puncture and impact at base. So minus 100 impact, 100% impact is going to fully remove your impact, which is a huge part of the weapon. We're also going to get critical chance, critical damage, and then maybe toxin or multi shot. Basically, it's going to make a really disgusting gas build. That is going to make it, so you're basically always procking gas on every shot. And if you get a crit chance Riven, you get this thing to 100% crit chance. It's going to just be disgusting, guys. It's one of the, like, the craziest sniper builds in the game. I don't have that Riven, and I'm probably never going to get that Riven. But I just want to let you guys know it is a possibility. So you want negative 100% impact, or more. Um, you want critical chance, critical damage. And then the last stat, like, Toxin probably would be really good. But you could, if you have minus impact and then like, critical chance, critical damage... Whatever else you have in that last slot, I'm sure you can make it work, honestly. Stash duration would be fine, stash chance, like, really, there's lots of options there, guys, and it's a really good gas stuff. I've seen some videos of it, it's really nasty. So here we are, just, like, getting some headshots, restoring our energy while we're in our four. Um, the more they damage us, the more our energy is drained. So it's not a foolproof method at all, guys. You'll run out of energy, like, I'm hiding behind a box right now, because I don't have enough energy to cast my four and be in it for a bit, so... Once we get a little bit more energy, I'm going to go in, try to get some headshot kills, restore my energy. Um, it's not like a... This is not a top tier loadout at all. I just want to show you guys that it's something that is possible. And the mobility with Ninkandi and Nyx's ass uh, Assimilate is, is actually really nice. So now we're just backing off a little bit, waiting for some energy regen. 
Got a headshot on that guy, gave us 15 energy. Now we're back and we got about 100 energy to work with. Um, yeah, you just need to make sure that you can find enemies to shoot. When the Grenier are facing the other way, it's basically impossible to headshot kill them, so your results may vary. I don't know why they're still fighting each other. I could have swore I uncast my, my two at, or my three at this point, but uh, whatever. Uh, yeah, Chaos with Nyx makes it kind of hard to get headshots, to be completely honest. So you want the enemies to just be, like, not focused on you, fighting other stuff. That's when you can go in for the headshot kill. Um, also, like, the hitboxes or headbo uh, headshots in this game are very wonky sometimes. Uh, specifically in the Nox. I feel like the Nox is a very weird headshot hitbox. Um, you would think that the whole, like, big bubble thing on its head is a headshot, but it's actually not. It's only, like, the head underneath that, uh, that bubble that actually counts as the headshot. Which makes sense, but at the same time, it's like... Uh, like, can I just shoot the huge bubble? Because, like, it's... Nox is annoying enough already. Like, I don't want to be, like, meticulously aiming at these things. No pun intended. Um, it's, like, underneath this bubble. So, yeah, guys, overall, can I recommend this mod to you guys? I'm gonna say no. I already really like the Volcar. That's why I'm working so hard to make this something I can use regularly. But if you just use, like, a Gracada or use an Archiplasmor, or use a, a kit gun, you're gonna have such a, like, you're gonna have a very similar situation to this where you're just, like, one-tapping basically every enemy on the headshot, and you can deal with hordes with that, those guns much better. Now, that being said, with my Riven, we can one-shot these Kuva Guardians very simple to the head, which is something I do value pretty highly in a weapon. So for me, personally, that that eno is enough right there. I can one-shot a Kuva Guardian into Kuva Flood with a headshot with his gun. I'm sold. That's all I needed to do for me, personally. That's going to be my go-to weapon on Nova for Kuva Floods. Just one-tap those Kuva Guardians. Very valuable to me. But like I said, if you don't have a minus zoom Riven, getting that fully zoomed value is annoying. 8x multiplier. Um, and the damage is not, like... It, this is not Eidolon damage right here, guys. Like, you're not going to be getting headshots on Eidolons unless it's the final stand. When you're just shooting the Synovia, that's no, there's no headshot multipliers there. So this is terrible against Eidolons. Um, but you technically can one-shot still on Chroma. So, yeah. That's going to be it pretty much for the video today, guys. Um, I just want to show you some, some ideas on some sniper-focused things. Uh, if you have Bright Purity, you can continue using that in your Volcar build and not replace them with meticulous aim. It, they're, they basically do the exact same damage like we showed at the beginning of the video. It's like a couple hundred more damage points, which doesn't really make a big difference in the long run. Okay, guys, um, I will talk to you guys next time. Please like, share, subscribe, and I will talk to you soon. Peace.